Hey, there Larson here. Welcome to the newest Synthesize Sunday episode. And today I want to... Wait, I'm in the wrong channel. Well, while I'm here, let me tell you that I'm going to join Drone Base Academy on the 17 per 4 Drone Base Marathon on April 17. So, see you guys there. And now let's get back to the video. Hi everyone, this is Paolo from the MB Academy and a lot of you requested the flurry bass from Monty's new track, Fade. So because of that I made four sounds so a million of you better watch this video. So this is the original track. And this is my recreation. Okay, this might need a little bit of mixing, but all of the principles behind the sounds are there. But before we get started, make sure you get subscribed to the channel, hit the notification bell to not miss any for future videos. And also, if you wanted to preset from this video, you can become a member of Preset Pass and you can also request your own sounds with priority. So with all of that being said, now let's get into the video. All right, so here I have an initialized serum and the first sound we're gonna be doing is this one, which in the arrangement is obviously the first bass. <laughs> So the principle behind the sound is going to be a sine wave fusioned with kind of a saw wave and some filtering. So let's just start by loading a sine wave, but instead of loading the basic one, we're going to load this MCB one. We're going to move the wave till position until we get something like this. So if we play this, which by the way, we're playing a D sharp, we get that sound. So now let's turn on oscillator B and let's load a saw wave, but instead of loading the regular one, we're gonna load a different one, like BS2 sub saw. This is weird enough. Let's turn on the filter, and now let's map an LFO into a cutoff of this filter. But instead of having A through this filter, we're gonna have B, like that. Now let's shape our LFO. Let's turn on trigger and make a shape kind of like this. Now, if your modulation looks like this, make sure you hold shift and alt, then click to make the modulation unipolar, bring the cutoff down, and now play with the amount of modulation to start getting a whoop. Now to get a consistent sound, let's put the random face all the way down. And let's experiment. Let's leave it like that. Now let's jump into the effects. And here we're gonna keep it real simple. We're gonna load a chorus, leave it completely as it is, and then load a filter and double down on the low passes. So let's put the LFO one into the cutoff here, bring it down. Once again, turn it into unipolar. Now let's go into a bit of post processing. So the first thing we're gonna load is Trash 2. And now here in Trash 2, we're gonna turn on the multiband mode. But we're going to get rid of the low band by right click and then remove the band. And then on the lows, we're going to load the crispy mode. Leave it as it is. Boost it a little bit. And now let's go into the highs. And in the highs, we're going to load blues driver. Boost it a lot. like this, just to get the energy on top. And now if you notice, we get a really weird feedback, which can be really cool, but in this case, we don't really want it. So let's go and add an EQ. And with this EQ, we're just gonna boost the mid range, just to make it sound a bit more fuller. And now let's add an EQ, and on this EQ, we're gonna load a low pass, so we can make the filtering ourselves and get rid of that weird resonance. So let's go here, into the automation. By the way, if you're wondering what it is, it's just a sidechain. And now let's bring it down. And so now, with this EQ, we can create our own wobble effect. There you go. That's good enough. So now let's play this. And if you want, you can experiment, for example, by adding resonance or removing it, depending on how clean do you want this filtering to be. 
And if you want to experiment with this sound just real quick, you can go back and change the waveform. For example, that sounds really good. In this case, we wanted to have kind of a saw with harmonics in this bass. But again, you can experiment. And the main purpose of all of these videos is for, is for you to learn sound design with these sounds, but also make them your own. So this is gonna be the first sound. Now let's jump into the next one. Okay, so here I have a new serum and now we're gonna be making this sound. And so for this one, we're gonna boost it a couple octaves up. Keep playing the same D sharp. And now the principle behind the sound is the one of facing. So let's turn on the sub. Let's turn on Oscillator B and then let's load the basic saw wave into both of them. Like this. Cool. Now let's boost the fine tuning of the second oscillator 60. So we get that facing effect. Now let's turn on the filter. Put both oscillator A and B through the filter. Change the filter to MG low 24. We want a steeper filter so a lot of harmonics don't bleed through the filter. Let's boost the drive. Enable the key tracking. So it tracks or keyboard. Now let's bring the sustain all the way down like this. So the sound fades with time. And now let's go into the effects. And here in the effects section, we're going to turn on the distortion. Boost the drive a lot. Then turn on a chorus. Boost the mix. Move the filter a little bit higher. Like that. Then turn on the compressor just to add gain. And then we're going to add a filter. And with this filter, we're going to map an LFO into it. We're going to bring the cutoff all the way down. And remember, hold Shift and Alt to change the modulation into unipolar. And now we're going to bring this amount down. Around 75, I think will be cool. Nice. Then with this level, we're going to create this stutter effect. So let's turn off the BPM function. And now let's experiment with this rate. So let me just show you how I automated it on Ableton. So how I automated it was like this. It goes from 0.62 down to 0.58 and 0.62 is equal to 14.3 Hertz and 58 equals to 7.7. .7. So it goes from 14 to half of it, which will be seven, which makes sense, right? Now for post-processing, we're just going to add erosion. And what erosion is, is basically a noise generator. In which part of the frequency spectrum do you want to add noise? Then add a an utility. And with this utility, is basically the same we did on the first batch with the filter, which was creating our own amplitude shape of the sound. And so the, what I'm doing here is basically making the sound fade with time. So without it, it sounds like this. It's just constant, but with utility, it's just kind of like a one shot. Cool. Then it's just a bit of EQing, accentuating the harmonics that you want. In this case, I kept it really subtle. And so that's sound number two. Now let's move into the third sound. All right. So here I have another serum, and this is the sound we're going to be making. Cool. And so now we got to move from more high D sharp into more deep D sharp. Cool. So now here we're going to load a sine wave and also another sine wave into oscillator B. So we have a very big sine wave we're going to load. We're going to turn on the sub. We get a bigger sine wave. We're going to turn on the noise. And then we're going to load some FM from B to add harmonics. Like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to map an LFO into the FM amount. Let's bring the intensity down. And what this is going to help us achieve is to create a progression in terms of harmonics into the sound. So let's make it slower. And it's hardly noticeable. But that is because all of this is very overwhelmed by the other sine wave. So let's bring Oscillator B down. 
we essentially just want B to be a modulator of A. And now let's bring down the sub, which is basically another layer for this whole modulation. And now let's go into the effects and add distortion. So you can see the subtle movement that this pick, that this shape adds. And you can change the intensity via this modulation. And you can also make some interesting movements, for example, adding sync into B, mapping this into sync. And essentially just add an evolution of the sound with this modulation. Cool, so now let's go into LFO number one. And what we're gonna do with this is basically create the whole shape of the sound. So let's map it into auxiliary A and also into the noise. Let's bring the amount down. And with this, we are free to create our own movement. In this case, what I did was just trying to emulate the shape that the track has. So it was something like this. Make sure you set your LFO into trigger. And now if you play the sound, you get that. Now let's go back into the effects and now let's turn on the compressor, add some gain, add some chorus, but put it after the compressor. Cool. And once again, in this case, this sound is used like this in the track, but if you wanted to turn this patch into something way cooler, you could add something like boosting the octave of B. Just add a bit of variation in the riff. Like this. Cool. So let's bring it back to what we had. And this is going to be it for this sound. Now let's jump into the last one. All right. So the last sound we're going to be making is this one. So the principle behind this sound is to build it like a jump up bass, but without so much distortion. So for that, let's just layer an insane amount of sine waves once again like this, and now we play this, we're gonna be playing an F sharp. We get A sub. And now let's use LFO number one to create the movement on this oscillator. Let's just bring everything else down for a bit. Set the LFO to half its rate, set our envelope, and now create a shape like this. Which resembles the movement in the track. Now let's turn on the noise and map this into the noise too. There you go. We have those two pulses. And now we're gonna add a bit of harmonics into this sine wave. So let's go here into the wavetable editor. We're gonna add the first one, which gives us a regular sine wave. And then we're gonna add B number three, which is essentially a fifth of the fundamental because it multiplies the fundamental frequency by three. Cool. So now we have the texture below. Now on oscillator B, once again, we're gonna go into the wavetable editor, remove the third one and just keep it as a regular sine wave. And the reason why is because the other sine wave was flipped in its faces. And on this one, we wanna keep the layering clean. So on oscillator B, we're gonna copy LFO number one into LFO number two. And now this is a really neat trick because you can hold alt and then drag your LFO into, let's say, two or three or four. Let's do it on four just to illustrate it. Let go of the click. And now if you click on four, tada, you get a copy of your LFO. So now let's just shape this a bit different. So it has a bit more tail. Map it into the level of oscillator B. And so now if we play this, we don't get anything special because we haven't changed oscillator B. Let's put it two octaves up and 10 semitones up, which will give us a seventh harmonic, which is the one that we want. Now let's boost this up a little bit, and let's add a bit of distortion into this. So let's go to tube distortion. There you go, let's leave it like that. Let's add some chorus too. But this one, instead of sending into a low pass filter, which will affect everything below a thousand hertz, we're gonna change it into a high pass filter and affect everything above 600 hertz just like that. And now let's add some gain with the compressor once again. And then we can add an EQ. And with this EQ, we can add like a crazy bell like this. And boost any harmonic that we would like. There we go. 
and now we're going to turn on the reverb and with this reverb we're going to map another fall into the mix of it and we're going to essentially create a reverb throw effect so let's make it one bar set it to envelope and so now we're creating that tail manually so let's bring everything down and then let's see where the sound ends which is essentially right here so let's create a tail around here Cool, let's just keep fine tuning. There you go. And you can change this reverb however you want. You can bring the size down, the decay down, add some low cut, increase the decay, change to plate. Now we can keep playing with the EQ. Until we get all of the harmonics that we want. In this case, I'm just gonna add some highs, like that. And now let's hear all the sounds that we made in context. Really cool. So I know it's not a one to one remake, but I don't think you would like to make the exact same track anyway. I think what we value the most is all of the principles behind all of the sounds and then how you can make them your own. So, that is going to be it for all of the sounds and also for this video. I really hope that you liked it and you found it useful. Let me know in the comments below and also tell me which sound would you like to see next. Before we end the video, make sure you get subscribed to the channel. Hit the notification bell to not miss any for future videos. Once again, if you want the preset, you can become a member of Preset Pass. The link is in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.